everyone and welcome to my sewing room. I'm Rosemary and this is Enchanting Rosemary Sewing and Embroidery. Okay, so I know that in the past I've done some videos on how to add quilt stitches to your quilt from the design center. Create your own, not go and buy a previously made quilting design and quilt your quilt that way. Um, and one of the things that I have not done a whole lot of, I did the flower that you probably saw, but um, this is a dressed in plate that I, I did and I wanted to outline it the way they would have done a long time ago when they made quilts that had uh, this old-fashioned kind of look in it. And I was, wasn't was about to do it by hand, and I'm not gonna sit there on my sewing machine and trace it out, even though I probably could have, but it's a lot of effort when you have a big quilt to move it under the needle on your sewing machine. So I thought, I think I can do this with Design Center. So that's what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the hoop and then I'm gonna trace it out on Design Center. We're just gonna see if that works. So let's go to the sewing machine. Okay, I am in Design Center. I've went ahead and scanned my quilt. You can see there's a lot of bulk right here. And this is one of the problems with quilting on your embroidery machine is you gotta deal with the bulk. And this isn't even a big quilt, but I think it's still gonna work good. I think it's gonna do a good job. And I really want to be able to quilt in different parts all over this quilt. So. Um, we're going to go ahead and give it a try anyway. So if you have a Stellaire, you need to use the app to scan it first. So I'm going to hit this and you can see they actually have a thing called an app guide and it tells you to use your phone to scan that and it'll walk you through it and tell you how to do it. One of these days I'll do a video on the app again when I have both a camera and a phone, which I don't have right now, so I can't do both of them. Um, but anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit this part right here because I've already scanned this and I'm going to hit the, whoops, my mouse is doing weird stuff. It's just jumping all over the place. Um, I'm going to hit this. There's my, the picture of my quilt that I've done. I'm going to set it down. Now I've already practiced this a little bit so I could make sure that it's gonna do exactly what I want it to do. And if I make it a little darker right here, you can see that I already have some lines in here right there. Um, that's basically um, where I did a fill already and I can't do a fill again and make them line up so I'm probably gonna show you how to just draw some straight lines on there and that's gonna work okay. So. Anyway, I'm sorry for a pause. My mouse got a little bit tangled up right there. So we're going to go up into here and we're going to draw a line. And the last line I drew was around this black and red one. So we're going to start here. I want to come in here. I'm going to leave this black just so I can see it. Eventually, I'm going to sew it in brown. And I want to use this um, outline tool, not this one. If you use this one, it's going to do it like three times. This one's going to do two times regardless. So let's just stick it with that one. And again, I'm gonna leave it black, so I'm gonna say okay. And then we wanna use our zoom button. Hit zoom and zoom up here so we can find what we're trying to trace out. And um, I've already got a line going up this way, so I don't need one going that way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start, I'm using, um, I'm using a mouse just because when I put my fingers in here, it always gets in the way and I don't always seem to get really accurate. And with a mouse, it seems like I can get really accurate. So that's what this little black arrow that's right here is, is a, is a mouse. So I'm going to click right here. And if you wanted to, you could get even closer. But I think this is going to work. So we're going to go here, we're going to go here, and then we're going to go here down to here. Now when I draw with this tool, it wants to continue. So what I usually do to make it just stop right there so I can come back up here is I just go ahead and click on the pour button and it lets go. So then I can, 
Let's see if we do 400, if that's too close. They seem to be just a little bit wobbly today. Okay, so I'm gonna hit this tool again. I'm gonna start right here at this corner. And if you make sure they bump into each other, then when it turns it into stitches, the software itself should connect them and figure out the easiest path for going from one to the next. So we're gonna go here, and then I'm gonna go here. And you can see that's as far as I can go. But if I bring my mouse, my red box down, I can click to here. And then I'm gonna click off again so that I can go back up here again. And I'm gonna to continue to do that. Hit the tool, start here, pull across, come back down this way. That's pretty darn close to stitching in the ditch. Let's come down here. Let's go to here and then click off of it. So I'm gonna to continue to do that all the way around my dressed in plate and then I'll come back in a second. So I came back for a minute because I wanna show you something that I kind of discovered while I was playing with this. I, I took the mouse off, I'm gonna use my stylist. Um, I have this tool chosen. I'm gonna hit it so that I'm connecting to this and I'm drawing to here. Now I'm gonna move my box over and I know I'm drawing on this one right here. All I have to do is tap this intersection and it'll make that line. Then I'm gonna come all the way back to this intersection and tap and it makes the line for me automatically. So I don't really have to draw across it. It's gonna do it for me. And then I'm gonna tap off of it. I'm gonna come back up here, make sure I have the tool selected, tap here, pull over here, move the mouse over, move the box over, tap here, move the box down to the intersection, tap there. So that goes really fast and I get nice straight lines. So that's, I'm gonna actually undo, and I want this to come right here. Um, I've already sewn that stitch, so I want it slightly on the inside, and then I'm gonna tap off of it. And now, if I zoom out, minus, minus, I have that whole side of my dressed in plate done. So that was pretty good. I like the way that works. So I'm gonna hit plus again, move my box over here. This is the part that I already did. And let's see, I can see that I have a line going this way, a line coming this way, but it stops because my thread, you know what I need to do? I need to do the opposite. I need to make it really light so I can actually see these lines a little bit better. There's a line there, there's a line there. So I wanna draw a line going across here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this and I'm gonna make it, let's just leave it black. And I want this tool here because all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line from here, from here to here, and then from here to here, and then from here to here. And that should finish out my crosshatch design that I already have on there. Okay, so let's push minus. So now we wanna do something here. And I think what I've decided we're gonna do in the corners is we're going to go into this menu. Nope, not that menu, this menu. Sorry, my phone rang. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see, where is that? This one, this, I, for some reason, I just couldn't see it. Um, okay, so we're gonna do this one. We're gonna say, okay. And we're gonna rotate that around and put it up here in the corner. And it's a little bit too big. So let's size it down just a little bit. 
One of the updates on the Luminaire, our grades update on the Luminaire, which I don't have because I was still there, um, is that you can put this in by numerical. So if you want to size 50%, you can put in 50%, which is pretty cool. I wish they had it on this machine, um, but that is going to make it a whole lot easier. So you could make all of these exactly the same size. But as long as I have it selected, I can duplicate it. And the next one over here in this corner is going to be the exact same size. Let's rotate it around and put it right there. And then I want something right here. So let's see, let's push OK and let's go into the shape menu and look for this one. Say OK. Let's see, let's rotate that for 90 degrees, put it right here. I think what I want to do, now it's funny, when you rotate something 90 degrees, don't ask me why, but then if you hit size, I'm thinking I want to move it from left to right, but if I push the left to right squish button, it squishes it down the other way. I don't know why it does that, but it does. So we are going to See, I'm doing it again. Let's push it out so it's longer and skinnier, and then do the one that looks like it's going to push it up and down, and that's going to push it in. So there it goes. So that's there. I like that. I think that looks pretty good. That's going to fill in all those spaces, and we're going to do the embroidery. So I want to make sure that everything in here is just a running stitch. So I'm going to pick running stitch, I'm going to pick pour, and I'm going to tap. I get that knock knock, which means it's already turned to that. So I hit next, and I'm going to look at it, and I can actually push and check each one of these. And they're all just black running stitches. Oh, you know... Oh, there it is. Okay, so that's in there too. So let's hit preview. Okay. We're ready to sew this out. So I'm going to set it down. Say okay. It asked me if I want to update the background. I really don't because I can't see what I'm doing. So I'm going to hit cancel on that. And hit embroidery. It still did the upgrade, the background, huh? That's interesting. Anyway, let's just turn it off. So now it's gone. Okay, so now that's gonna embroider that out. And um, we're gonna say, um, I'm gonna move this over here. You can see that I have quite a lot of quilt right here that I'm gonna do this on. But let's just go ahead and push go and see what happens. Okay, so I came back and I've already sewn out that part that we just did and I'll show it to you in a minute, but I want to do another part. So basically we're going to go up here and we're going to go into here and I scanned another part of the quilt and I have it in the hoop. So it's going to take it a second to find it, set that down. Okay, so this part of the quilt is a whole lot of half square triangles all put together. And I didn't want to do a stitch in the ditch or anything like that. And and if you can't tell by looking at it, these this is really old fashioned fabric. It's supposed to be Civil War um, reproduction fabric. So it's kind of like an old fashioned looking quilt that you will see when I go to show it at So Fun. Um, but I want to do some kind of old fashioned quilting in it. And I started looking through some of these shapes that are in here. And there are some like birds and leaves. And I think to me, that kind of makes me think of an old fashioned quilt. So hopefully that's what we're going to end up with. So we're going to push that. I haven't practiced this design out in my head yet. Um, let's rotate it 90 degrees. Okay. And then let's, um, let's size it. So it looks like that. Let's see. And this is facing towards the center of the quilt here. Let's put it right there. 
And then let's go back into the shapes again and pick this one here. Say, okay, where's that leaf? Okay, rotate that. Let's rotate it this way. I'm going to make sure that this, that is way too big. Let's size this down. I'm going to make sure that this butts into one of the other parts so that um, it, it does a continuous line throughout. So let's just move it here like that. Say, okay, duplicate it, move it over here, rotate it, and then it kind of overlaps right there where the bird is at. Okay. So one of the things I don't like is this line. So we're going to hit plus, try and get pretty close right here. I don't like that line. So I'm going to say, okay. And I'm going to erase it. I probably should have erased it before I put the leaf in there. Wouldn't that have been smarter? box over here okay so let's zoom out let's see what we got So what if we took right where these two leaves and we just said, let's do this as a running stitch and nah, let's go back. Okay. Let's do it again. Well, I have a little dot right there I want to get rid of. Okay, let's go right here. it connect like that. Okay, now let's minus it out. Yeah, let's go back. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'm, I, like I said, I'm making this up as I go along. So you probably are going to have like the same kind of a um, progress as I'm doing or process. Let's see, rotate it, okay, size, rotate, Okay, so now let's zoom up and see. This one here, rotate it just right 
bring it so that it touches right there. Oh, and look, it touched right there too. Isn't that good? Let's hit plus, move it over here, and then hit the eraser, and let's just erase that little tiny overlap right there. And then let's minus out. I kind of like that. I think that looks pretty good. And then I got my two little birds on the inside. And then, um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hit this. And then I'm going to draw a box down around this whole thing. The birds and the leaves and everything. I got to get... all the way over here so I get everything. So everything is selected and I'm just gonna move that whole design up so it's right dead in the center of my block. Yay, I like that. And I'm gonna save this in the memory because I have four of these blocks and I want them to repeat all over the quilt. So let's just put that in the memory of the sewing machine so I can bring it up again and hit next. I think I forgot to make sure, hit return, it's a satin stitch. Let's not do that in a satin stitch. Let's do it in this, say, okay, pour. Okay, I think I got it. Preview. There's a, there's a little satin stitch right there where I don't want it to be. So I'm gonna hit return and hit chain. So everything is a running stitch. And hit preview, hopefully that's still, how do I get, it's right there on the tip of that leaf. So hit return and return. Let's come in. Right there, I think is where we got a problem. So I'm going to hit the eraser erase that part there. And then I'm going to hit pour. See that right there? I have no idea what that is, but we're gonna get rid of it. I think we're good to go. I think it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna hit return one more time and I'm gonna hit save because that other one was not what I wanted. So I'm gonna save that again. Hit next and preview. And then we're gonna set this guy down. And we're gonna embroider that out and see what it looks like. Okay, so I haven't put the binding on this yet, but I've got it all trimmed and I've got it completely finished being quilted. And I wanted to be able to show you a little bit of the stitching that I did on the um, machine in from 
tracing it in the design center. Here's one of the fans. And here is, oh my goodness, I got a little opening right here. I'm gonna have to go back and fix. I didn't realize that. Um, so here's the little birds, which they don't stand out really big, uh, which I kind of like the fact that they blend into the background a little bit, but they are there. And then if I move it this way, here's the big um, dressed in plate in the middle with the cross hatching and the outlining on there. And then it's got like little teardrops going all the way around, which I, I think that came out really, really nice. And then what I did after, I did all that by creating it in the design center. Then I went ahead and in my PE design software, they do have some quilting stitches. They're there for you. They're in the design menu, so you can use them and size them to whatever size you want to make them in. And I went ahead and I used one of those in this square here. And then I used another one to do my sashing. So I went all the way around the quilt with this real pretty one that has little hearts and everything in it and put one over in the a heart in the corner here and finished it up. So hopefully that was helpful to you to learn a little bit more about how to add stitches from your design center to go ahead and get your quilt finished. If you go back into some of my other videos, you will find that I did it with the big Hoffman flower panel and with my grandson's quilt and with a couple of other ones. So this is just another one that takes you to another step of things that you can do in the design center to finish your quilt. I didn't show you before the back of the quilt. Um, so the back, again, is not as noticeable as if I'd used another color. I did consider using like an off-white so it would show up a whole lot, but sometimes it doesn't look very good and I don't want to take that chance. So I thought the tan was very good because it finished up my quilt and it looked really nice. I'm very happy with this quilt. I really wanted to go for the old-fashioned um, 1800s look and I think I accomplished that. If um, you are watching this in September, which is when I'm going to upload it. Remember that in just a couple of weeks, I'm going to do so fun and this quilt will be there and you can come and take a look at it and see how nice it really did come out. And by then I promise I will have it bound in, in time to show it for so fun. So, um, I hope you had a good time. I hope maybe you learned something, make a comment, um, subscribe, share, tell your friends, ask questions, all of that kind of stuff. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.